So let's say you have a rich substance, you find out that there is some SVHCs or at least one in your product. Uh, what do you have to do for a complex product? Well, you have to inform your customers uh, that they do have these, uh, you do have this substance in their products. So other substances in articles or com complex objects must be declared via a database, which is a skip database. It's called skip database. It's managed by the European Chemicals Agency and it covers most uh, complex products. You see here some examples. Uh, so uh, PCB assembly would be on the skip database, a plane, a car, a satellite. So it doesn't matter if it's con consumer or um, a professional B2B a type of product, you would need to, to report it. Uh, if it's just a part or a simple item uh, which is not finished, uh, you would still need to report it on the skip database. So if you don't declare anything on the skip database, you are basically saying that you don't have any SVHCs above the declarable threshold, which is possible. But if it's not the case and the European Union finds out that it's not the case, well, in that case, your product could be uh, withdrawn from the market. Uh, you may have to uh, fix the situation before being able to reintroduce into the European market. Um, the skip database. So here, here is a tutorial step by step on how to prepare a, a complex product dossier on the skip database. So we will do it from the scratch, step by step. So if you Google skip, reach skip, you will eventually find this website, the eka.europa.eu slash skip, S-C-I-P. And then you will see a first page where you could access the cloud services. So that's where you need to click in order to declare your product and the, uh, the SVHCs in your product. You click on access ECA cloud services, and then you will need to register. So they will ask you like for, for details about your company, where it is credentials about your company, pretty much. If you have already registered uh, with the ECA uh, cloud services for other um, tools, then you would just need to log in. Then when you log in, you would access this page and here you would click on ECA Cloud Services. That's where you would be able to do your skip notifications. Then you will uh, um, access this page and then you would click on subscribe on the first, first option. You would access this page and you would close that. It would tell you that you are welcome on the, what they call the IOCLID which is the cloud services managed by the um, ICA. So once you close it, then you would click on articles. You don't manufacture substances, mixtures. It's really applicable to articles, including complex articles. So here you see a very simple screw, but if your products are more complex, well, that's on the same place that you need to click then you would uh, be on this page. So you would add a new article. If you have already added articles, they will be listed here. But if it's the, the, the new time, the first time that you are doing it, then you would just need to click on the plus or on the top, it says new article. You can click there as well, same thing. Then you would access this page. Um, and here you would create a new article. It would enter its name. So here we entered fictitious, uh, fictitious medical device, FMD 100. You would click, you would enter uh, the um, device name and then you would enter its uh, identifier type. But you could use, uh, there you have different options, uh, European ones and other type of options to identify your article. Uh, all of these fields are mandatory. So you need to give a unique identification of your product here. And then you would create your article. Then uh, it would tell you that the article has been created successfully. And then you would open, click on open, you'd access this page. 
and you will be able to make your declarations on your product. So you see here it says uh, fictitious medical device FMD100. So your product is registered. You can see the name of the product. Now what you need to do is click on please search and select to select the article category. So you will have many options and uh, you would need to type either you already have the uh, product code or uh, you would uh, type um, description of the product and find the right code. In that case, it's a magnetic resonance imaging device. So we found it and we get this uh, description here. So we would, you would select it once you find uh, the best fit for your product, the best des description. Then you would click on production in the European Union and it will uh, ask you whether it's imported in the European Union or produced in the, in the European Union. So in that case here, this product is uh, produced uh, overseas, but imported in the European Union. And then uh, you would need to click on new item if you want to declare a SVHC that is found in a part within your product. So you have the whole uh, product, the whole medical device in this example. You want to uh, declare all of the components in your bomb, all of the components in your parts list. No, only the, sub the, the, the components that do contain uh, at least one substance of very high concern, one SVHC. In that case, you would need to click on new item. Then you would click on uh, article and you would select the article. So you would create an article within your product. Here it says not found because you don't have any other uh, articles already created for your product. So you need to create a new article or a new component, uh, if you will in your product and you have a list of questions about this article. Uh, some are mandatory, others are optional. So you need to click on the first one, article name. Article name field is mandatory. So then you would enter uh, the name um, and you could enter really the name of the product. You enter it so also its identifier, just, uh, just as you did with uh, your whole medical device. And then you would enter whether it's imported or produced in the European Union. Uh, since your product, the whole assembly is imported in the European Union, everything that is inside is also imported in the European Union. Um, then you would uh, enter the SVHC that is in this article. You would enter it in the category called concern elements. You would add new and enter the cast number or the name of the SVHC. And then the concentration rate range. So if you don't know the concentration, you just know it's above the threshold, then you would report between 0.1% to 100%. That's by default what you would declare. Um, so here, this substance is the, the Tetra EGDME, which is used in the uh, lithium ion battery inside of my medical device. Then you would click on save. And you have created your component with the SVHC. So you would click on save again. And then here you would click on save. So you can see uh, you have your product listed with lithium ion battery and inside of the lithium battery the SVHC. So you could also declare multiple SVHCs. It's possible that there are several SVHCs in one simple, uh, one same component. And you would click on save when it's done. Um, so now you need to validate the data before submitting it to the officially uh, on the iCloud. So you need to click on new working context. 
then on your working context, you will see this little window that would pop up. You would select that it's about skip notification and click on apply. Then you will receive this, you will see this page and you will click on validate. And it's gonna validate your data. So if there is no issue, that's what you will see. No business rule failures, etc. If there is an issue, the, the, the issue will be um, declared here as well. You have validated your uh, dossier and then you need to create before submitting it. So you would click on create dossier, create dossier again. Then your dossier is uh, created. Uh, when you submit a dossier, uh, then a submission number will be given to you. You will also receive a submission report with a skip alpha numerical number that you can share with your customers or third parties. Then you can proceed to submission of your dossier. You can also view your dossiers by clicking here. So that's the idea how to, um, to declare uh, SVHC in a complex product. Um, the ICA has published different uh, tips uh, in a document called Key Tips for Successful Skip Notifications. And I found particularly helpful uh, to improve your data submission a uh, couple of tips. The first one that we found very helpful at Envaropass is grouping. You group identical or quasi-identical articles. So let's say you have different models for one same type of product. You don't have to make multiple uh, declarations, especially if they have the same SVHC, same substances, same pretty much same declaration, just different type, different features in your products. You can group. You can definitely group. Or even if it, we are, you are talking about the same type of um, components that have the same SVHCs, same supplier, uh, it's just a, a component family, then you could also uh, group it. So that's very convenient, very useful, and we save you a lot of energy and time by grouping as much as uh, possible. Uh, another uh, tip that we found particularly interesting is to reference. You use referencing in complex dossiers. What does it mean? It means that you need to request skip numbers from your suppliers. So when you would ask for, uh, let's say you ask your suppliers whether or not uh, a specific product contains uh, substances of very high concern, you would also ask them if they, are or if they already have registered via the skip database. And if they have, well, ask for their skip numbers so that you could enter the number when you do your declaration and you would benefit from an applicable information you, your suppliers have already entered in the skip database so that you save a lot of time, you avoid mistakes, etc. It's very convenient, very useful uh, if your suppliers have done the notifications. Uh, tip three is um, only the lowest number of layers of components apply. So let's say you have sub-assemblies um, between the finished product and the component that contains the SVHC. You don't have to declare all of the different sub-assemblies. We don't really want to know that. That's not the intent of the skip notifications. Uh, the skip database wants to know whether or not there is a SVHC and where it is in your design, not necessarily knowing what are the different layers of sub-assemblies in your product. So, you don't have to do that. You can jump directly from the last level of your assembly, if you will. Uh, so you typically have your product name and the last level and the SVHC. Uh, 